Good morning. Good morning. We are live from Renton Christian Center and uh, I was sorry I was distracted. I was talking to our guest. Actually, the birthday boy is in the house. So we have birthdays and I just want to say happy birthday right, right out of the gate. I want to start off by saying happy birthday to those of you that are celebrating either this last week or this coming week. And so Pastor Daryl and his wife Sue are actually popped into the church this morning and it's his birthday. I think he's turning um, 54 today. Close. Within 20 years, am I close? Okay. And, um, and then it's Andrea's birthday today, actually, on the day. So happy birthday to you. And then I have to say it's Gretchen's birthday on Wednesday. So, and she's going to be um, young as well. So just good to uh, be together as a church. I know we're separated by screens, but the Bible says that we have one spirit that he pulls us together. He draws us together. He gathers us together, even though we're we're separated. And so I'm excited about that. Um, I'm also excited about just the, the idea of reopening and uh, what God is doing with, with that. And so I just want to give you and lay out real, real quick for you kind of what we're thinking and some of our, our plans so far. And so this is what's uh, what we're thinking about for next week. Um, and you'll hear from Pastor Alex in a few minutes. Oh, I just ruined the surprise. Uh, he's joining us this morning. And um, but what we'll do is we'll have worship and announcements and myself here in the building using the cameras and I can get rid of my little platform thing here that I'm sitting on. And uh, then we have Sunday, Sunday. And so we'll kind of be gathering next week after service. And then um, we're hoping here soon that we'll be um, starting services again, where you can actually come to the building and sit in the chairs and we can be together. And uh, we're working on those details right now. We're just watching what, um, Foursquare is um, is helping us to walk through. We're watching what they're doing and then also um, what the state is doing and what they're allowing. So we're looking at possibly doing a, a couple services. And so that's why we sent out a survey for you this week. It was a simple yes or no. Hey, when we open the doors, are you going to come? So if you haven't answered that yet, please let us know. Let us know how many people might be uh, coming with you. And um, if we have, you know, we want to fill this place up. If we have to do multiple services, we'll do multiple services. We're excited to be together. People are actually trickling in this morning. That's good to see people. And um, don't tell anybody. So it's just good to be together uh, as the church. Hey, we are, again, um, excited. We are coming from four different locations this morning. And so we have our director, Eric. That's why he has the headphones. He doesn't let anybody else touch the headphones. He wears the headphones. So he's directing behind the scenes. We have Pastor Alex in the house. And then the Ashbecks are here. And they're going to lead worship. So, uh, again, just excited to be together as the church. And we are the church. We are part of something big that God is doing. And so I want to send it over to Pastor Alex. And he's live from his home. And uh, so, Alex, tell us what's happening. Give us a little update on you. Hey, hey, family. Welcome, welcome. Good to be with you again. And uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to be with you in person. That's really the big deal is in person. There's nothing like it. So a little update on Alex. I love my new job. And um, I work at two different buildings. We call them homes, one in uh, East Lake area, and then the other one is in Capitol Hill. And uh, in fact, uh, the one in Capitol Hill is literally a block from Cal Anderson Park, which is where the uh, protests have been taking place. At least they stage they're meeting there and then they march into town. So it's only a block away, but I've been blessed with literally no trouble. The protests have not really bothered our world uh, at all. So that's been, been great. Um, but what has been a great impact was the uh, chance that I have just to engage with the community. I mean, every day whether I'm changing a deadbolt or I'm painting something or patching a hole or uh, answering a phone call for a lockout at 3 a.m which happens more often than you would like to know. Um, I get to engage individuals one person at a time. And it's very, very exciting, very cool what God's doing. He keeps just opening doors that seem to have been prepared for me when I show up. You know what I mean? And uh, so just wanting to keep my ear tuned to the Holy Spirit. So when those moments arrive, um, I'm actually available and useful. And so I want to challenge you to do the same thing. Continue to realize that God has prepared good works for you ahead of time and all you and I need to do is fall into them with open ears and open 
heart to be available. Um, like for instance, last night, literally last night, I got a call at nine o'clock PM. Uh, there's a brand new person moving in this gal. Uh, was getting ready to come and she could not find out where her key was. We leave them in lock boxes and it got a little jumbled. So I had to drive up there and uh, I, I was struggling myself to find her key and figure out what uh, my partner had done with it. So I finally got it all figured out and I uh, met with the woman and her daughter. She was helping her move in and I said, oh, God is so good. And you know what they said in response? All the time. It was awesome. It's like, okay, they're believers. So um, I'm, I'm just learning to drop the God bomb every now and then and uh, see if people respond or how they respond and uh, just kind of to take the risk. So again, wherever your world is, whatever your mission field, I want to challenge you to do the same thing. Trust that God has things ready and waiting for you to engage. Well, anyway, let's take a look at what's going on here at RCC. Uh, first thing, we're going to have communion, as Kevin mentioned, a, a little bit later this morning. So uh, at any point in time, jump up and grab what, whatever you have around the house to represent the bread and the wine and, uh, and then have it with you so that we can all join in communion together a little bit later. Uh, also, True North Kids, as we talked about earlier, wants to say thank you for your hours and hours of effort and sweat and painting and construction and cleaning to get all of our kids' uh, facilities prepared to put kids first. I really appreciate uh, the way you have literally made kids first and first and first and made them a first class ministry uh, around RCC. So they wanna say thanks by uh, just giving away free ice cream. You're not gonna purchase it this year. You're not gonna have to purchase free popcorn, free ice cream. If you show up in the parking lot after services next Sunday and we will park six feet apart, but we're gonna roll down our windows, eat ice cream and popcorn and talk and laugh and tell stories. So be there next Sunday. Uh, second thing is I wanna also invite you to another work party. One of the final ones uh, for this year, Saturday, June 20th at 9 a.m. till about noon, any space you can fit in uh, that time period would be great. And uh, I think the coolest thing is Bakhtiar and his family will be providing you lunch at the end of all that. And he's always got an amazing, amazing dish to prepare. So come June 20th. Uh, sadly, we have to cancel the adult mission trip uh, this year because of the coronavirus concerns. And so, uh, you know, we've been to Eastern Washington many times. And I just learned that in Eastern Washington, they call it the Rona. We're canceling because of the Rona. So I thought that was kind of cool. But anyway, save your money for next year. Save your money for next year's mission trip. It's going to be outstanding, just like it always is. And let's see. Oh, yeah. Last thing. Just don't forget, when you get an email from Anna concerning, uh, you know, church activities, ongoing ministries, ongoing uh, meetings online, make sure you open those emails and uh, get engaged Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays. There's something happening almost every day besides Sunday morning, so be sure to engage. Last but not least, thank you so much. I've heard nothing but good stories about your financial support. You guys are so faithful and you put your, uh, you put your money where your mouth is. You actually believe Jesus. You actually know that we've been assigned to this community and God planted us 38 years ago. And uh, thankfully because of his miraculous grace, we're still going strong. So I just wanna say thank you for your uh, continued faithfulness. And uh, again, if you weren't aware, you can give online. You can mail a check, you can drop by, hand off cash in person if you want. You can do it any way you choose. But uh, we just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I am so proud of this uh, family of believers. I just pinch myself and uh, I haven't missed a church service yet because I just love you guys so much. And I uh, can't wait to see you again in person. All right, man. Well, let's, uh, let's have some worship. Let's engage the Lord and embrace him one-on-one -on -one personally with Mitch and Ashley. Take it away, guys. Hello, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good job. Say hi. Good morning. Um, yeah, we are just about ready to dive in just to his presence. And I, I love what worship is because worship is not just singing a song. Okay. Hear me say that worship is not just singing a song. There are so many forms of worship. When you just give your thankfulness to Jesus and anything you do, that is what worship is. And so we are just going to have some moments just praising Jesus this morning. Um, but before we start, 
I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes, okay? If it's safe where you are, if you're driving a car, don't close your eyes. But if you just have a moment where you can safely close your eyes, that's what I'm asking you to do right now. I want him to work in your life this morning. I don't want this just to be another church service. I want this to be a service where he absolutely moves you. Maybe it's been a little quiet for a while and you kind of feel in a dry spot. I pray that this is the time that he just comes in and overwhelms you with his presence. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or on the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, I spoke a word, you were singing over me. been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming No. 
that still today he chooses to forgive. He chooses to provide. He chooses to do miracles. He chooses to save. Spend a moment and thank him. Thank him for his intense sacrificial love for you. But church, I'm going to say this. I don't want that love to just go one way. I don't want the love to just be from Jesus to you. I want you to have that same intense, fierce love for him. And maybe that area in your life's been a little dry. This world right now has been something we've never experienced before. It is going through interesting journeys of all different aspects. I don't want you to forget that he loves you in all of it. But most importantly, he has given you the opportunity to love him back and to trust him with everything you are. Jesus. Jesus. Let's sing, I love you. Jesus. Father God. Let's sing, I love you. Jesus. You love us. Oh, how you love us. Oh, how you love us. And how you love me so. I love you, and oh, how I love you, oh, how I love you, and how I love you so. Sing it again, I love you. And I love you, and oh, how I love you, and oh, how I love you, and how I love you. One more time. Yes, I love you. And oh, how I love you. And oh, how I love you. And how I love you so. Yes, you love us. Oh, how you love us. Oh, how you love us. God, let us remember that today. Let us walk boldly in that promise, your love for us, but also let us walk courageously that we have that same intense love for you. Father God, I pray for Pastor Kevin, just your anointing over him as he continues, Father, to just lead your church in worship. God, as he continues to just share your good love, Father. Jesus, make this service a different service today. God, be tangible and move today. Thank you, Father, in all you do. Amen. PK, handing it over to you. Wow, thank you, Ashley and Mitch and Alex. So good to see you. And uh, Eric, thank you for doing all the things behind the scenes. But God so loved us. That he gave Jesus, his only son, to die for us and to and sacrifice and suffer and be wounded on our behalf. And the Bible says for those of us that believe in him that we have eternal life. And, and that's what communion is all about. It's remembering all that Jesus has done for us. And, and um, so I hope that you took time this morning to grab a couple things, to grab a piece of bread that represents the body of Jesus and then grab some juice or whatever you might have that represents uh, the blood that was shed for us. And I want us to be able to um, take a time just to remember and reflect this morning. That's what communion is. For those of us that believe in him, that follow Jesus, it's easy for us as human beings to forget. And so Jesus said, when you come together, I want you to remember, always remember what I've done. 
And so communion is the great thing about it is it, it is together. We do communion together, but it's also a time for us to remember what Jesus has done for us personally, but also uh, what he's done for us corporately. But it's all, and then it's a time for us to reflect to, as Paul said, to examine ourselves, to make sure that we're, we're checked in, that we're, we're walking with him, that things are right with him. And so I encourage you this morning to, to grab, grab a piece of bread. And I know a few of you are in the house this morning, so I invite you to come and uh, take the piece of bread and remember uh, this was done for you, that Jesus' body was broken and bruised and beaten on our behalf, so we don't have to. And so, Jesus, this morning, as we take this bread, as we take this juice, we remember exactly what you've done for us. And Lord, bring to mind just the things that you've done. Lord, our own personal testimonies, the things that you have done for us individually, and then what things that you've done for us, even as a church. And, lo, lo, and though we're separated right now, God, we are not separated because of what you've done for us. And so we, we take the bread and we take the juice and we remember this morning how good you are in your name. Amen. So I invite you to partake this morning. remembering together what Jesus has done for us. So good to sit and remember. Sometimes we're so busy, we're running, we're doing our, doing our thing that we forget to sit and reflect and to remember all that he's done for us. And so just a good reminder to reflect that this week and even this morning and to remember the goodness of God and all that he's done for us. <clears throat> I was going to tell you, hey, text me something that God has done for you. And you are sure welcome to do that and blow my phone up during, during, and I have it on vibrate. So if you hear all my, my phone going crazy, that's, that's you guys just reminding yourselves and then telling somebody, hey, this is how good God is. And this is what he's done. Like Pastor Alex was saying, hey, praise the Lord. Praise God that we found this, we found this key. It's just a proclamation. We're, we're proclaiming God's goodness. And so God is good. Amen. He is. Well, we've spent... Um, three weeks in the, in the book of book of Acts and just chapter two alone. And some of you are like, how long is it going to take us to get through this book? Well, on the current pace we're on, it's going to take us a little over a year and a half. And so some of you are like rolling your eyes at me. I know I know some of you that know how long we took to get through the book of Ephesians in Sunday school are laughing at me right now. But according to plan, we will we'll finish uh, right right before fall. So this is our summer series of the book of Acts. I think it's perfect timing that God has put it on our hearts to look at this book because of what the church is going through right now across the world. You know, we were used to doing one thing and now things have changed and things are different. But what I'm praying for is that there's, that there's this longing in every single one of us to be together, to come back together and to praise God together and to serve him together and to make a difference for his kingdom together. And so that's what I've been praying for during this time. And so I'm excited about that. And uh, so we're looking at the book of Acts. We looked at chapter two and the Holy Spirit showed up in a powerful way and, and there was noise and there was languages and and new gifts had been given to the to the church and and the crowds had gathered because they had gathered to celebrate God because it says they were God fearing people that had gathered in Jerusalem. And now they hear these sounds and wonders from heaven. So they gather and then Peter stands up and shares this message from the Holy Spirit to the people. And it was a message of repentance is a message that we messed up. And so, you know, the response to that. Usually that's like a harsh message and like repent and that whole thing. Well, the response was like 3,000 people gave their lives to Jesus that day and surrendered their lives to him. And so now there's this instant church. We're like talking about pouring in the Holy Spirit and now instant church from 120 to 3,000. And so that's what's happening. And, and we saw that they gathered together and they devoted themselves. They were devoted people. And so they devoted themselves 
to learning and knowing more about Jesus and to diving into what scriptures that they had in the day. And then they devoted themselves to, hey, we're going to spend time together. We're going to fellowship and we're going to actually break bread together. In communion, yes, like we just did, but also actually sitting down and having meals together. Uh, there's just so much that happens during that time. And then they devoted themselves to prayer. So, so much is happening here in Acts chapter 2. And then we step ahead into Acts chapter 3. And we see uh, a couple of little things, you know, like a few days later. We don't know the timeline exactly. And we just want to pick it up there and see what is going on here. We're going to talk about divine appointments. Have you ever experienced a divine appointment? You know, when it's that thing when you're doing what you do. And then someone else is doing what they do. And then God, like always, is doing what he does. And then at that exact moment in time, you all come together. You and whoever else and Jesus. And it's that divine appointment where God is going to do something miraculous. And I pray for divine appointments. I pray that my eyes would be open, that our eyes, that your eyes would be open. Because I believe that God brings divine appointments every single day. And I'll just say most of the time I miss them because I'm so focused on me. I'm so focused on what I'm doing in my own life that I forget about the times where God says, hey, I want you to go with open eyes. And so that's what we see in this passage that Peter and John, they're going up to church. They're going to pray and they have this divine encounter. And so I like to call them divine chaos because it's God's divinity and our chaos our chaotic world, and when they collide, it's just an amazing thing. So open up your Bibles, grab your Bibles. I encourage you to grab your Bibles, and as you do, um, my phone has been going crazy here, and I just want to read a few things that uh, some of you have said, some of the things that just remembering God's goodness in your life. Uh, <laughs> so God made the decision uh, for Cindy on the mission trip. She was just struggling with just like, God, I want to go, but because of work and all that stuff. And so God made the decision for her. And so, Cindy, that is really good. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, just God's keeping us safe. And thank God for bringing uh, your brother's heart. So, Mike, you said your brother had heart surgery and um, brought your brother through. That is so good. Wow, that is really good. Ken and Janet, just, just be, you're just glad that that Jesus is in your life and that you have a church family. That's really good. Susan, you say hope. Wow. Toby, you get the prize because you said God give, gave you a wonderful wife. So, Janera, make sure you hear that. Make sure you hold them to that. Um, no, and you have great kids, great grandchildren. Yes, so good. <laughs> uh, you guys are so good. Thank you, Pam, for your kind words. Yes, John, you just said, hey, God has given me contentment, so just being where I'm at. Hey, as you're turning your Bibles and you're actually running around your house right now and trying to find your Bible, we're in Acts chapter 3 this morning. Pastor Alex. <laughs> God has given you grace. That's what you're thankful for. Yeah, just in your new job. So thank you. Thank you for being so faithful in your new job and being faithful to Jesus, even though it's been really hard, Alex. I know uh, for you, it's been really hard. So thank you for being faithful. Good and faithful servant is what, who, what Jesus calls you this morning. Yeah. So good. So yeah, keep reminding one another. Uh, tell, be a testimonies, be live testimonies to one another. Um, and, and keep our eyes open for divine appointments. Hey, we're going to look at a divine appointment right here in Acts chapter 3. I'm going to put my glasses on uh, so I can focus, literally focus. Uh, my eyes, but it helps me focus my heart when I'm reading the scriptures. And so we're gonna we're gonna read one through nineteen. So I invite you to uh, look with me here. All right. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. It was about three in the afternoon, and now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those who were going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. And Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting to get something from them. And, 
church, this is one of my favorite passages in the Bible. Of course, I say that a lot because I love his word and I pray that you do too. But this is Peter's response to a man who was begging, who was just literally crying out to anybody uh, to give, give, them, give him money and just so he can provide for himself because he was, he was sick and not doing well. And this then verse six says, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth walk and then taking him reaching down and taking him by the hand, right hand he helped him up and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong and he jumped to his feet and began to walk and then he went with him into the temple courts walking and jumping and praising God when all the people saw him walking and praising God they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple gate called beautiful and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him I just want to stop here for a moment. We're going to see in this passage that the first part is talk, talks about physical healing. And so we see a man who is miraculously healed. He'd been born disabled and he, he was about 40 years old and he's instantly healed. And so it's about physical healing. But what, what I want to talk about and what next as we continue in the scriptures is now we're going to talk about a spiritual healing that's going to happen. That's going to take place right here. And so while the man, verse 11, while the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in a place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as it is by our own power or our godliness that we made this man walk? The God of our Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed. You disowned him before Pilate, though he wanted or had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy right and righteous one, and you asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead. I mean, imagine being in that place. Imagine being in awe and wonder of, of what was going on. And then you hearing these words spoken from Peter saying that you disown the holy and righteous one and ask for a murderer to be released instead. And you killed, I mean, Peter is just telling them that you killed to the power of the Holy Spirit. Peter is saying and telling them you are the ones who killed the author of life, but you couldn't destroy God's plan because he says this, but God raised him from the dead and we are witnesses those of us, the 120 in this room that you see and have experienced over the last few days, we are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, verse 17, I know that you acted in ignorance, and so did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what, it had foretold, what he had foretold to all the prophets, saying that this Messiah, that his Messiah, would suffer. And then verse 19, he wraps it up by saying this. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins will be wiped out and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. He says repent. That means turn, change direction. And turn towards God. Change the direction. Turn towards Jesus. Look at Jesus. And your sins will be wiped clean. And you'll experience times of refreshing. That is really, really, really good news. We, we experience a divine encounter here. We see that James, no, we see that John and Peter, two buddies that were walking to church. And they're, it's time to pray. And so they're going to pray. And, I'm going to do a little side note. I'm famous for my side note. Not famous, but I do side notes a lot. And uh, my prayer for you this morning is that you have somebody, a friend, like Peter had John. John had Peter that encourage one another. They're going to church together. Um, they're challenging one another. They're completely different. We know when we read, read the stories in the Gospels that Peter and John were really different. But yet God had brought them together, and they were friends and they were going the same direction. They were going towards Jesus and they encouraged one another. Uh, hey, we're going to church and we're going to pray together. My prayer for you this morning is that you have people in your life. You have friends 
true friends in your life that you can go to church with, that you can pray with, that you can encourage, you can play with, and you can just live life together in community that challenge you, that challenge you to walk in the same direction um, and to walk towards Jesus. That's, that's my prayer for us as a church, that we would have friends. That's my prayer for you as an individual, that you'd have a friend that challenges you to walk with Jesus that point you in the right direction when you want to swerve off in the, in the wrong direction. And, and they tell you to, Hey, swerve back, repent, turn back in the right direction and let's walk together towards Jesus. And so that's what's happening. They're walking uh, to, to church this morning or in that day. And they're going to pray. It's actually not morning. It's afternoon. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon and they're heading to church and they're going to pray. And um, you know, back in Acts chapter two, uh Oh, we jump back to Acts chapter two. We'll never get away from Acts chapter two. Because as the church, when the Holy Spirit showed up, we'll always refer back to Acts chapter 2. But it says that when they devoted themselves, they gathered in the temple courts daily to pray and to spend time and to learn, as well as to break bread together. And so Acts chapter 2 talks about them gathering in the, and going to church. Peter and John are doing that very thing, and they're heading, heading to church. They're going to pray. And then we have a meanwhile. So they're heading, they're kind of doing their own thing. We're talking about divine appointments. They're kind of doing their own thing. They're going to church to pray. And then um, meanwhile, a man is being carried, a man who is born disabled is being carried to um, beg at the temple courts. And he's outside this one gate and the gate is called beautiful. Um, it's such a cool picture uh, of what's happening here. This gate called beautiful is a unique gate in the temple. It's 45 feet high. I mean, that's higher than our sanctuary ceiling. It's 23 feet wide. It, the gate is actually so big, it takes 20 men to open it and close it daily. It's made out of Corinthian uh, bronze. We know what, uh, you know what, bronze, I wanna make sure I read this right. <laughs> it's actually made out of Corinthian brass. Um, and traditional brass is made out of copper and zinc. We learned that this week in our trivia game on Tuesday night for some of us that were doing that. But um, it's Corinthian brass. And what Corinthian brass, 180 years before, when Corinth was taken over by the Romans, the, Roman, the Romans burned all their silver and melted all their silver, gold, and brass together. And it made this really unique metal, uh, precious metal. And so this temple gate, the gate called Beautiful, this priceless gate, is where this beggar begged every single day and, and asked for money. And this is the gate that Peter and John are going into. And I believe what, we're, what we see here is a beautiful thing. We experience a very beautiful uh, picture here. And we're going to see this man's life changed physically, but even more important than physically, we see this man's life going to change spiritually, that his life is going to, he's going to be healed, not only physically, but spiritually. And how much more important that it is that we're, healed on the inside, then we're healed on the outside. And that'll be my prayer again for us, is that we would be healed first on the inside. We could have everything that the world has to offer and yet still die and be separated from God. Well, that's not what we want. What we want is healing from the inside. And that's, that, and that's what we read. We pick it up uh, in verse three. We'll actually pick it up in verse two. It says, you know, meanwhile, now a man who was lame from birth was being carried. So he's been carried to this gate called beautiful. I want you to pick it up in verse three. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. And here's the cool response that, I mean, he's just asking for money. Just whoever will listen, whoever will, will, will stop and just give him a little money in his cup or bowl or whatever you might have. He's just asking. He's, he, he, in order to survive, this is what he needs to do. And up because he can't work, he can't provide for himself. And so this is what he does. And Peter and John, I, I just want you to notice this here, that they look right at him. They actually notice him. And I was just thinking, like, for me personally, um, how does that apply to me? Like today, you know, there's on ramps, off ramps, there's, there's corners that I pull up to that I see people. And I know there's stories about people taking advantage and and some of those people make more money than we make on a daily basis. But I believe that the Holy Spirit still speaks to our hearts today. And there are times where that he instills in us, like, I want you to help this person. And I believe that that's what was happening here with Peter and John, that 
that they heard this voice and they stopped and they noticed him. You know, people just need to be noticed. And that's what I hope that we are, we're people of followers of Jesus. I pray that we are noticers of people, that we observe and that we see people. And it might not just be that person on the corner, but it might be a person that we're standing next to in line. It might be somebody in our own household. It might be our, our husband, our wife, our kids, that, but that we would notice what's going on and that we would listen. So this guy was just begging daily, just speaking and asking for help daily. They probably heard this guy pass this guy hundreds of times, but in this particular time, this divine appointment, God shows up and they hear him and they respond to him. And I like how they notice him and they look straight at him. And they actually call out because, you know, he's calling out for whoever want, whoever's going to pay attention. And honestly, most people don't pay attention. Most of the time, we look right past the beggar. Most of the time, we look right past the person standing with the sign on the, on the side of the street. And I remember a time, in fact, most of the time I do, um, because if I make eye, to- eye contact, then I notice, right? And so I just remember there was a time where Cleo and I were on vacation and we were uh, coming off this off ramp and, you know, sometimes our hearts can be really callous to it. And we were sitting in traffic and it was a lot of traffic and we were stuck there for quite a while. And he walked up and had his sign and it said something like, just lost my job trying to make it back to my family in California. And um, just for some reason, uh, the Lord put it on our hearts and Cleo and I both at the same time, we noticed, you know, we noticed and um, it was cool because we were, we we're on vacation and, and the rental car place upgraded us for free to a convertible. So our top was down and he was standing right here. It was impossible to look away. Uh, we couldn't hide with tinted windows. We couldn't hide with the doorpost of our car. Um, we were in a convertible. We were stuck, right? And so uh, I just asked him, hey, man, what's your name? And uh, he said his name and we were stuck in traffic. And so there's no escaping. We we're like, oh, man, what am I going to do now? And, um, and so we just started talking. I said, hey, tell me your story. Um, how did you get here? And he was a construction guy and he'd been working uh, in the city. And uh, it was back when the, the this city was the number one growing city in the United States. And then it just completely like overnight crashed. He lost his job. He hadn't been spending his money wisely. And he was just trying to make it back to his mom and dad in California. He was about 23, 24 years old. You know, and some of those things, some of those stories we hear like, oh, you're just making that stuff up. But in our case, uh, Cleo and I both, we like, we noticed. And it's like the Holy Spirit said, I want you to help him. We had just gone to the store. We had some bottled water in the back seat. And I just said, hey, can I give you some water? That's really all we have. And um, and so we gave him some bottled water. And then, you know, the next morning we had we had a free buffet breakfast where we went. And, you know, we don't eat that much, even though it looks like I do, but I don't. And, uh, you know, we're just sitting there like, you know what, what if I grabbed an apple? What if I grabbed a bagel and, um, and we'll just wrap it up and we'll just take it to this young man. And we said, we just did, so we did that and we drove up and he was there. We dropped it off and, uh, had more conversation and just talked with him and really began to get to know him, told him we were praying for him and just wanted to encourage him. And, um, so we did that for the first couple of days and then we did that the next day and then he was gone and he had actually, what we hope for and pray for is that he had raised enough money to, to go back home. And it's just one of those times where I just want to say those divine appointments were where the Holy Spirit opens our eyes and we notice. And so church, we have to be those type of people. And what's happening in our world right now, I hope that we're not shrinking back in fear and we're just locking our doors and hiding. But I pray that we notice what is going on and that we can be people who make a difference and who can stand in the gap on behalf of those. There is a gap right now, right? So Jesus calls us to be the one who fills in the gap. You know, maybe we can be that voice of reason. And, and uh, man, that's my prayer for us, is that we be people that notice. And that's what happens here in this passage, that Peter and John doing what they do going to church to pray. This guy does what he does. He's begging. He's trying to provide for himself. And then God does what he does. And they, he brings them all together at that perfect time. Peter Lewis says, hey, look at me. <laughs> this guy just saying, help me, help me, give me, you know, you know, you know, might have a funny sign or whatever it might be, but he's asking for help. And Peter says, hey, I want you to look at me. 
So this guy looks at him expecting to get money, expecting to get something that will provide for him temporarily. And what Peter gives him is something that will last him for eternity. Will it last for him for eternity? And, and we pick it up in verse, verse 6. And then Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. What an incredible statement that Peter has. I mean, there's not enough money in the world that can solve our problems today. There's not enough money in the world that can solve your problems. We think it will. Like, oh, if I just had a had million dollars, everything would be fine. There's not enough money in the world that can solve the things that are going on inside of our hearts, that are going on in our society. It's Jesus is the answer. And I know that's the Sunday school answer. And some of you are smiling and laughing right now. But really, truthfully, seriously, the only answer for what is going on right here in this man's life, what is going on in your life, what is going on in our life around us, is Jesus. Only Jesus can fix what is going on. And, and he says this, silver and gold I do not have. It doesn't matter how much money I, I could give you, all the money I have, it won't, it won't help what's going on inside. But what I do have, I give you Jesus. And, and this man is healed. It's interesting that Peter actually, the physical touch reaches down and grabs him by the hand, pulls him up. And as that motion is happening, his ankles, his feet are strengthened. He stands up. He's probably like a wobbly colt at first. And, and then all of a sudden, he realized, I'm up. I've never stood up in my whole life. This man had never stood up on his feet, on his own, in his whole life. And he's healed. And he is excited. Wouldn't you be excited? I mean, wouldn't you be excited? There's a few of you here in the, in the house. Man, it would be exciting to walk without pain, to be able to walk. He not only walks, but he jumps doesn't say, but he probably even skips. He's just so exuberant about his healing that he follows John and Peter. They go to church to pray. Hey, come with us. I mean, they just go. We're going to go to church together. We're going to pray and we're going to praise God together. And then people, this crowd, massive crowd gathers. And they're just like, isn't this that same guy we walked by for years? Now he's healed. Now he's restored. He's praising God there in an amazement. This guy can walk. This guy is healed. And then Peter shares with them, shares with the crowd, and a way for them to all be healed. And it starts on the inside. And so that's where we pick it up. And Peter says, hey, this didn't happen because I'm Peter and because he's John, because we spent three years with Jesus. No, this didn't happen on our power. This wasn't our idea. This didn't happen. This is God's idea. It's for God's glory. And Peter goes on to share with them and he gets really serious with them i mean i know a lot of times in, in the american church we talk about god's love and we talk about how he's reckless for us and we sang that this morning how god's love in our own minds doesn't make sense why would he do what he did for us and it's so true but god did what he did for us because he does love us and jesus suffered and died and we talked about that this morning with communion his body was broken and beaten on our behalf and his blood was shed for us and and peter is saying this this is jesus this jesus who you just witnessed he is risen from the dead you and he points out to him and he's very very straightforward he's very very straightforward here in this passage and I want to pick it up uh, in verse 13, about halfway through verse 13. He, you know, Peter says he appeals to them in their, their family history, in their cultural history, in their religious history. It says the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our forefathers, you know, they, they would have recognized Jesus. And it says you handed him over. You handed him over to be killed. In fact, you traded a known felon, a known murderer for the son of God, for our Messiah. And that you traded. I mean, that's the worst trade ever. And that's what happened here. And, and then Peter says, you disown the holy and righteous one. And I don't, in my, like in my, in my Bible, I love it that 
holy and righteous one are capitalized because he's saying you disowned the Messiah, the holy one of God himself. You disowned God himself. And you killed the author of life, verse, verse 15. And so I can just imagine in that moment, sometimes, you know, in those moments where time literally stands still uh, in their hearts, I believe this is one of those times where it is just a painful reminder of what just happened, that many of these were part of the crowd that condemned Jesus. And even a week before that, they're the ones that were praising Jesus. And then condemnation comes and then they, then they just owned him and then they're just living life and, and going to temple and Peter reminds them. And why is he reminding them? Why is he so blunt here? I'll just say, why was the Holy Spirit so blunt here? Because Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, shares these words. Because God really wants us to get it. That we as human beings have messed up. We have messed up. And I'll just say, a lot of us, we look at these passages and we judge those who were there. And we say, oh, I would have never done that. I would have been a follower of Jesus. I don't know. I would probably say I wouldn't wouldn't have been because I've been so focused. I'm so focused on my own stuff, right? I would have been right in that crowd, praising him first, and then when not seeing him doing what I thought he should do by taking over and and conquering the Romans, uh, and then like, well, if he's not going to do that, then let's put him to death, and that's what happened. And so Peter reminds them of this, but but he, and he says, but God, even though your intention was to do this. God raised him from the dead. We've seen him. We're witnesses of this. Is what he says in this passage. And he reminds them it is by this Jesus that the man that we've passed by hundreds of times was healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, this man was healed. It was this Jesus, the Jesus that you disowned, the Jesus that you traded for a murderer and put to death. It is this Jesus that has healed this man. And so again, this, the stillness of that moment and just the, in, the time to reflect and it's like, wow, that was me. And so the exciting thing is he gives him a chance to, to make a difference and to change direction. He didn't say you're ho a hopeless generation and then walks away and leaves, but he gives them hope and gives them the opportunity to change their direction. And, and he says what? He says, repent. Turn, swerve into a whole new direction. Pastor Danny back in New York, when we were back there last year for our youth mission trip, the name of his church uh, in, in the little area of Brooklyn uh, is called Swerve Church. And that's what that, what that word means here. It's, it's a changing of direction. We're going to swerve back. We're going to turn back to Jesus. And that's what, he, what Peter is saying here. Just turn back to Jesus. And when you do that, your sins will be forgiven. What you have done in your own personal life will be forgiven. What you have done by, by disowning and dishonoring and trading the righteous one, that will be all forgiven. And you'll experience the forgiveness of sin, and you'll experience times of refreshing. I just thought that was so good. Verse 19, let's just read it together. He says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. I mean, not just put aside, but I mean like wiped out, gone, forever, gone. And that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. We need times of refreshing right now, church. And I believe this time for us, this two and a half months off, um, some of us, I've been home most of the time. Some of us are still working, doing other things. This should be a time of refreshing. Take, I will just say this, take advantage of this time to be refreshed by the Lord. Take this time to swerve and come back to him. Take this time to spend, spend your days, spend your moments with him, having your sin forgiven, and then experiencing refreshment in him. So good. Another word for uh, refreshment here is cooling. So in the heat of the moment, 
we experience a cooling from the Lord. It's like an air conditioning on a super hot day, right? We experience refreshing from him. Now, they didn't do this out of with, with, with bad intentions because Peter does say, hey, I know you guys did this out of ignorance. And even your leaders, they did this because they didn't even know what they were doing. And I just thought, wow, 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 wow. Because it's like for us, even today, there's things that we do. It's just because we don't know. And it's just out of the ignorance of this is what I know. This is what I do. And Jesus, even from the cross, said, God, forgive them. Those who were crucifying him, those who were making fun of him. I mean, he's, he's on the cross and they're making fun of him. And Jesus' response Instead of calling down fire from heaven, instead of calling angels down from heaven, his response is forgiveness. Because he knows they have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea that they're disowning the holy and righteous one. They have no idea that they're, they are killing the author of life. And it's out of ignorance. And I, I would just say for us, even today, some of us have lived life for a while and it's and what we're seeing in our society right now, so, some of us have just, it's been out of plain ignorance. We don't know. We don't know other people's story because we haven't allowed ourselves to know their story. And so it's important during this time that we get together and learn from one another. No matter what color of our skin is, no matter what background we are, we're from, no matter what country we're from, we need to get to know one another. And so we don't live in ignorance, right? So it's, it's turning, it's swerving back to God and coming back to him and allowing him to do the spiritual healing inside of every single one of us. Because in Matthew 16, Jesus says, hey, what, what, does it, what good is it for to have everything the world has to offer and yet to die without God and spend eternity separated from him? And Jesus is saying, it's more important that we are changed on the inside that we're healed on the inside. And I know some of us this morning, we have physical things going on and we would like to ask Jesus to heal us physically. And we're going to do that this morning. And I know some of us are super overwhelmed and burdened by, by our society and what's happening right now. And so we're going to pray for healing for that as well. But we're also going to pray for spiritual healing, that it would start here inside of our hearts and when our hearts are changed and turned towards God and we receive his heart, he trades our broken, hurt, painful heart and gives us his heart, we're going to see things a whole different way. We're going to see one another, I hope, in a whole new way. And so that's what I want us to do this morning. You know, our response is when people come to us, it's like, you know, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I have Jesus and I can give you Jesus. There's not enough money in the world uh, that we can throw at our problems and, and our, uh, you know, our society. We have some of the most richest people in the world have died over the last few years. You know, I think of the Steve Jobs, you know, Paul Allen. These guys were billionaires and they didn't have enough money to fix what was going on with them physically. So we don't have enough money to fix those things. But what we do have is we have Jesus. And he can start on the inside and work work, and how do what he does on the inside. And then no matter what happens to, to us physically, we know that we have a place for eternity. And that's the most important thing, right? And so what I want us to do this morning, yeah, do we need healing physically? Yeah, some of us do, if not all of us. Do we need uh, psychological healing? Some of us do, yes. Uh, do we need social and racial healing right now in our in our in our world, yes. But what we really need is we need Jesus. We need spiritual healing. So I, we're going to pray that Jesus would open our eyes and he would touch us and he remind us of who he is, that he is the holy and anointed one, that he is. Jesus is the author of life. And that's where we receive and that's where we receive life from. So that's what I want us to do this morning. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. You know, Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5, you know, briefly says, by his, by his wounds we are healed. 
but I want to read it from the um, God's word translation. It says, Jesus certainly has taken himself, taken upon himself suffering and carried our sorrows. We thought he was wounded and beaten and punished. We thought God had done that. But Jesus was wounded for our rebellious acts. He was crushed for our sins. He was punished so that we could receive and have peace. And we receive healing from his wounds because Jesus took our place. Now, is it the name of Jesus or is it what the name represents and who the name represents? Well, I believe it's who the name represents because we are talking about the author of life, the holy and anointed one. It is the name of Jesus that we are going to be healed today. And I just want to encourage you. There's times where you can't, you can't even think of another word to say. You can't even utter the words help. I want to encourage you this morning. If that's you, you don't even know what to say. Can I just encourage you just to, to say the name of Jesus? Because it's not just the name. It's who the name represents. The author of life. The holy and anointed one. So I want us to pray this morning, and yes, I want us to pray for physical healing. I want us to pray for psychological healing. I want us to pray for racial and social healing today, and I want us to pray for spiritual healing. So would you pray with me? Those of, those of you in the house this morning, those of you who are watching, uh, whatever time you might be watching, either right now or another time, but I want us to pray together, and I want us to, to have a conversation with the author of life to honor and recognize that Jesus, that Jesus is the holy and anointed one who came into this world to, to give us life, that God so loved us that Jesus came. Jesus was willing to come. Jesus knew he was coming to lay his life down for you and for me. And yet he still came. And so, Lord Jesus, this morning, I want to pray about a whole bunch of stuff. But I first of all I want to pray for my family here, my friends here, and those who I don't even know this morning, that you would touch their hearts and that their hearts would be healed. That is the first thing I want to pray for this morning, that Jesus, that our hearts would be changed by the power of your Holy Spirit and the, your presence in our lives. Everything else can be made right. And yet, if we don't have you, then we don't have anything. And so, Jesus, we pray for your presence right now for those who are longing for your presence in their life, who have been living a life of sin, who have been, a life, been living a life separated from you, been living a life that has been selfish. But right now, they see it, they notice it, they observe it. And they cry out to you, God, we are the beggar now, sitting at the gate of beautiful. And we pray that you do a beautiful thing this morning, right now, Jesus, that you would heal our hearts. And Lord, yes, we pray for those who need psychological healing this morning, who are dealing with things that even the doctors don't even know. Jesus, we ask that you would bring healing. We know that you do, and we know that you can. And we also pray for physical healing. Lord, sometimes you, that's where you start. You start with the physical healings to open our eyes to, to see. And so then we will jump and run and physically move towards you. So we pray that this morning for, for those who are who are watching, Lord, for anybody who is watching this morning that needs a physical touch from you, in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray that you'd heal them. And I pray that we would be able to trust you with that healing. Sometimes it doesn't come on our timetable. Sometimes it's instant, whatever it might be. But God, we trust you with that. Lord, we pray right now also just for our, our neighborhoods, our towns, our cities, our counties, states, and our nation, our world, that this would be a time where we notice one another, 
that we don't look at the color of skin. We don't look at backgrounds. We don't look at what country they're from, but that we just love one another and that we care for one another. That's what the early church experienced. They, they experienced just an incredible care and love for one another. So I pray that we'd be people that notice that you again would start with our hearts, Lord, and heal our hearts. And because you heal our hearts, then things would begin to change. And so we pray for that right now in our, in our communities. Jesus, that you'd bring healing to our communities. We pray for police officers and, and protesters both, Lord, that there would be just be a spirit of peace on whatever is going on in those, in those places and that, God, you are so much bigger than, than what we see. And that you're working in every single one of us. There's a reason why we're, we're gathering and that we're out on the streets. And so, Jesus, do what you do. Divine appointments. Just create these divine appointments. Us doing what we do and then you doing what you do. Help us with that, Jesus. Help us to see it. Help us to live life with eyes wide open. In your name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, church, I pray that you're plugged in, that you are connected with him, and that you're connected with one another. Um, hey, we're going to be opening doors pretty soon. Uh, check, it, check your emails and let us know. If you didn't get an email from us, email us and let us know what your intention is. We're going to continue to live stream even, if, when, even when we do open the doors because I know some of you still need to stay safe and need to be home. Uh, so we'll still be able to do that, but uh, we'll also be able to open the doors and, uh, and be together. And we'll move chairs around. We're going to do a little bit of that. Uh, be plugged in. Be a blessing to somebody this week. Hey, next Sunday is Sunday, Sunday. So right after the service, we're going to ask you to get in your cars, drive to church, and uh, get some free ice cream and popcorn. It's going to be really good. We just want to bless you. Uh, we actually want to see you. So thank you so much for being part of what's going on. Uh, in our world right now and what's going on at RCC. You are a blessing. Thank you. God bless.